Pete Fountain, I don't know how long ago, a couple of weeks ago, when one of our stops, we got a call on our call-in show out of New Orleans, and uh, the caller said, now, if you're coming to New Orleans, there's a couple of things we want you to do. Uh, one of them is talk to Pete Fountain. Are you New Orleans? Well, I'm a little, little piece of it, I, uh, and I'm so proud to be part of it. I'm born and raised here, did all my school here, and been playing professionally since I'm 16 years old. So on Bourbon Street, in the last uh, nine years, we've been here in the hotel at the Hilton. I don't want you to feel like you're old, but um, about 20 years ago when I was a disc jockey, uh, any time uh, we wanted to fill with a good instrumental, we always reached for a Pete Fountain album. And uh, I was thinking about coming over. It's uh, it's interesting to be able to meet you and talk with you after all this time. When I you know I used to, I got to know you back in the late '50s, early '60s during the rock and roll era. I had a lot more hand. I was taller. You're a lot taller. <laughs> <laughs> in the '50s and '60s, yeah. The, the, at that time, though, there were a lot more middle of the road radio stations, and uh, Pete Fountain got played a lot. Uh, what happened? How, how have you kept so popular over the years? Well, I had a lot of albums out. One. Uh, well, it was on Coral then, which MCA has now. But uh, we had uh, almost 54 albums with one company. And we were pushing out maybe uh, five, six albums a year of, uh, of cotton. Well, I'd say copy. We did a lot of Beatles stuff. We did jazz. And, you know, so out, out of, uh, I'd say out of the 54, there's about 10 of them that they still playing around the country. Good music. So it's, I've been lucky that way. We put some good stuff down and some standards. And I think that's what helped me. What's the album sales at a time like this compared to what they were? I, 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 was there oh, a time no. when you sold a lot more albums? Oh, yes, definitely. At that time, I had, uh, I think I had three albums on the charts at one time. And uh, now, it's, you know, you don't hear of anything jazz on the charts. So when you say Dixieland or Swingin' Dixie or, or just pop, some pop music, uh, those chart days are gone. But it, you, you got to recycle. It, it might come back. Something in our business, the cable television business, we see a lot of is uh, references to MTV, the music channel, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's pegged to a much younger audience. But wh why do you think the music, the I, I don't even know what you call it, maybe an acid rock or a pop rock or whatever, why is it so popular? Well, let's push at them so much, and uh, you know, and it, they come through the years when I was coming up. Uh, we we had uh, rock and roll, you know. When I say coming up, when I was playing which was more popular than Dixieland, and the kids liked it more. The Dixie or jazz just stays at one level, especially in New Orleans here. It doesn't go up, doesn't go down. People that like it come from all around the country, all around the world, to come listen to some jazz. What, are your, what will your audience be like tonight? What's the age group? A uh, mixture from college, from, from 18 to, to 70, uh, 80. You know? it's, it's, it's a wide, uh, wide scope. Any possibility that the kind of music you play will come back and be very popular in the sense that I mean, it's obviously this is a successful club and uh, you're steady. But uh, you know, the, w you think you see any trend happening right now? I I, I see a trend coming on now that it's uh, it's 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 real slow coming around. It's the big band thing, and maybe the the going out the ballroom dancing again. I I see that coming back slow, not not jumping right in, you know, not popping like some of the trends do, but uh, I can see this. And like a circle coming around again, and that the people are really going on enjoying dancing to the big bands. But that's that still is the, the uh, I say 30, 40, 50, 60. You know, we we try to scoop up the the younger ones. You know, the 18 and 19, but they they have their own dance steps. They can't dance the, the whole stuff sometimes. The purpose of our trip um, around the United States is to get an idea of what people are thinking politically. I. We didn't ask to talk to you because we want to know who you're going to vote for, but we, it would be interesting if you see music interests changing depending on the mood of the country at large. I, um, <clears throat> I don't know whether the, the, uh, that could change it, you know. I really don't. I don't, I don't think that mood, mood could be changed by... Remember back during the Vietnam War? Yeah. A lot of demonstrations and uh, a lot of, uh, I don't know how you could even categorize, a lot of folk-type music. Oh, about uh, yeah. Well, yeah. maybe maybe could could go that way. I didn't I didn't realize that. Has there been a period? Uh, I mean, in, 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 do you find that your business changes, the attitude of your audience changes, depending on what the country's feeling overall? No, uh, the only th the only thing we feel in the pocket when the, you know recession or something, when people don't come and don't have the money. What's it like but, now? But other, it's it's picking up now. It's starting to uh, 
We had a rough summer. All through New Orleans, it was pretty rough. I think all through the country, the summer's been real rough. You have, but, any, you have any idea why? I don't know. I, uh, I, I think we're the last one through the South here. You know, when you say in New Orleans, we, it looks like it, it starts maybe a year or two. Cause when we were on the road a couple of years ago, we could see, we could see people were just having a rough time in the factories up, up north. And uh, we, were, we were doing great here. But now it, it's, just, it's just reversing. It's, it's hitting us now. It hit us the last year. Your club's not always been here in the Hilton. No, we've been here about uh, nine years in September. What was the reason for locating in the hotel? Uh, I, I had my own club on Bourbon Street, and uh, this is my own club here. We, we lease from the hotel. It's a great relationship we have, the Hilton and myself. We, uh, they bring the people in, and I entertain them. They, uh, but uh, I, I was on the streets, like I said, since I was 16, and I had been in business for myself for 26 years and uh, mostly on Bourbon Street. But I, I got off the street, it, it started to rain, uh, they wouldn't sell the building, a couple of things, it started to rain in the club. And the guy wouldn't fix the, the landlord wouldn't fix the roof, so I, I moved out. Uh, Baron Hilton heard about it and uh, he called me and said, you know, would you come to the Hilton? And I said, good, and so he built the club. He's, we've been very good friends since. Has this town changed much over the last 23 oh, yeah. years? I, I've seen a change since the, uh, the World's Fair has been down here. You know. Really? Yeah, well, uh, building up to the fair, let's put it that way. That's, that's made the big change. We, we, we cleaned our act up, as we say. The, the town spruced up, did our streets, cleaned them, paved them, painted the buildings. It's, uh, it, was a big, it was a good thing for us. It, it, we might not come out of it financially, but it, it's, uh, in the long run, we'll, we'll, it's going to be good for the town. What's happened to music? In, on Bourbon Street and the, the jazz sound of New Orleans, are there more musicians in this town today than there were when you first started? I think so. Uh, now they tried for a while to put country on Bourbon Street, country western, and, and it, it didn't. So they, they still have one or two groups, but they thought maybe that would be the answer. But it, it has its ups and Bourbon Street is like a, like a, like a yo-yo. It goes, it's got a high level, low, you know. And it's at its high, it's at its high peak now. It was low for a couple of years. But it's great now. It's uh, I I never talk about Bourbon Street because I was born and raised on it, really, and it, it's been good and made my living. And uh, but it, the the peaks of it now, it, it, it's at its highest. How would you describe your music? Is it Dixieland or is it jazz? I'd say it's swinging Dixie. It has a little swing to it, jazz and, and Dixie. It's it's that's not pure Dixieland. Where did it start? Where did that kind of music start? Well, I'd say a lot of it started down here, in New Orleans and then went off to Chicago. And uh, they have different types of jazz. When you say California plays a different, California jazz, the Chicago jazz, New Orleans jazz, all these are different types. One, one might be just, the tempo might be just a little faster than the other. And uh, one jazz might be organized a little bit more, like California jazz. It's, it's just, you know, great how they put that together. Is it, um, is it really American music? Is it one of oh, the... Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's one of the few things we got. That in country music is really American. It's just all American, because everybody around the world is trying to copy it. You know. Do you travel anymore? Uh, as, as least as I can. I try not to because I uh, paid my dues with the one-nighters, and uh, living on a bus, everybody smelling like an old shoe after about three weeks of you know a month on the bus. But I still have my bus, and we go out uh, maybe three weeks a year. And that's during the summer, around August. And we'll, we'll lease a jet, a uh, little jet, uh, when we have to pop up. We, we flew to San Antonio last week, last Saturday. So we just popped up there, and we, we come back the next morning. What about the big band? You mentioned it, that you, you sense that there may be some Well, I, I, well maybe, maybe it's a dream that, uh, that everybody would like to, to, to see it come back. And maybe, maybe I'm just pushing it. But I, I, could, I could see it. Uh, we don't, I do it at the fair. We have a big band four nights a week at the fair, and um, in dancing, and we have a big dance hall there, and the people come out. It's just fantastic. I, I you know, I didn't realize because I play shows most of the time. I don't get to play the dancing, and when I do, I, you know, I see how these people really enjoy it, and it really takes the pressure off you. Instead of playing concerts, you can relax more and play to the dancers. What what happened to the big band? Uh, I think uh, too expensive. All right, when you say 25 people, you're going to travel. Now you have to, you have to feed these, and you have to keep them working every night with one-nighters. And maybe you might spend a week at one place, but, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the 
the most. But uh, it's just too expensive. Uh, Twenty piece band, all your all your gear. Uh, you're talking maybe two buses instead of one bus. What's it cost? Have you ever? I'm, I don't know that you have the figures right on the tip of your tongue, but if you to to put a twenty piece band together to travel, one night stand. What's it, what's what's the out of pocket cost the uh, salaries and everything? Well, Is there any way to quantify it? It, it would it would it would have to be from from ten to fifteen thousand a night. Now now you you talking about you know having money now you can do it uh, if you. Uh, if everybody gets like the flat scale or something like that, or, or if, they, if you have them on a, on a weekly thing, so maybe you might better let them charge five thousand a night for the band. But still, some places can't afford that five thousand. Know? I remember, I, I had I once was in charge of getting the my the band for my high school prom, and it, I think it was seventeen fifty. Tex Benneke, <laughs> Tex yeah. Benneke and his on, on the road then at that time, Tex it with the Miller band. And he had a uh, 15, 17 piece yeah. band. In 1750, now. Now, how long ago are you talking about, Brian? I'm talking talk <laughs> about. I don't know how I hate to put you in the spot, but. It was 1959. Yeah, well, yeah, well uh, all right, triple that day. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, quadruple it now. It, uh, the Allies just pushed us right out of, uh, right out of taking the Allies. I mean, in, in the sense of, of it's just too expensive unless you, you could. Get the milk run going where you where you're going. Then the charter a plane, you you really have to have some serious money. Now that's what we do a lot of times. We because we have nine nine men with the manager, so we, we lease we lease a, a jet, and uh, we put that the price on top of it. If they want us, good. If they don't, we. The biggest thing is I have a job, and this is you know when you can tell them I you know like I I have a job. I'm not looking for a job because we 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 could work here every night, which we don't. We we work here five nights a week. One show a night, which I paid my dues. We used to do seven shows a night. Seven shows, seven shows a, a night. night. Seven days a week. Yeah. How could you do seven shows a night? What yeah, time did you well, start? Well, you, you, you start about 9 o'clock, and you finish maybe about 3 or 4 in the morning. You do 45, 15. But this is years back before, you know, the union got strong enough to, uh, to stop it. What, you know, I've always often wondered, you sit in a, an audience, uh, and you're entertained, and it's live. Um, what's the optimum time? How long does the audience want you there, and when do they feel like they've been satisfied? Well, I think it depends on uh, us on the stage, on, on, my, on myself. Uh, when you could see them getting fidgety, one thing, or getting up and walking, or you see one or two couples just leave, maybe they had to. But if you see more than that, you figure you're on too long. Because we, we start at 10, and we usually play about an hour and 15, maybe an hour and a half. If if it's running. If not, I'll, I'll back it off to an hour 15. How many encores will you do? We don't do it because we do so much of not that much talking, no singing, just jazz, that we, we, uh, we open it and we close it with Wade on Young. When the curtain closes, that's it. You know, we, uh, Have you studied that? I, it seems like it's one of the more interesting things about performers. That, you know, some will entertain for 40 minutes and go away and come back and do another show. Others will entertain, like I say, for an hour and 15 minutes, no encores. Others do the three encore numbers. Uh, has that thing, now, been, now, you, you just feel it? It's, it's so different when I play at the Reunion Hall at the fair with the big band. I, I have to do an encore. I have to come back because, you know, they, it's that looseness, I guess. And uh, when I get off the stage, they start hollering, so I'll come back and I'll do uh, two or three more numbers. Now, I could have done those three numbers right straight through, but uh, they feel like they're getting something. And I feel like you know I, I could I could give more that way. Now here at the club we don't we don't do the encore. It's funny, you know. I never did figure it out myself. We just do the hour, fifteen hour and a half, and uh, straight through, just pop and jazz. And I, I figured, well, they they really once in a while we get some people a uh, standing ovation, or everybody stands up to go to the bathroom at the same time. That's what I say. But everybody leaves at once. Or every, you know, when we get that standing ovation, we try to come back and do something for them. Do you ever run into anybody that doesn't know who you are? Oh yes, you know a lot of a lot of people. Are you surprised at how many people do know who you are? Uh, that surprised me more than uh, you know, because everybody really thinks I'm taller. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> That's true, bro. Well, I mean, well, first thing they see, the two two years I was with Lawrence Welk, I was between I was next to a guitar player that was shorter than me, and and I think at the kind of the the sax section, a guy that was about my size or just a little small. So when I stood up. 
with the band, I look tall. I mean, uh, compared compared to the guitar player. So uh, I, I've, and I've gotten that for years and years. You know, as soon as they see me, you know, and bef I know they're gonna say it. So now yeah, I usually say I used to be taller. But how but, tall are you? I'm, I'm five six and a half. You know. I used to be six five. <laughs> You know, no, it, it, it really is one of the more interesting things about people, especially when you're used to getting to know them on television, mm -hmm. that you think you know what they look like in person, and then inevitably, and I'm just like everybody else, I thought you were a lot taller than that. <laughs> That's the truth. It, you know? it is true, and then you see somebody and say, oh my goodness, <laughs> what's wrong with him? <laughs> what, 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 what happened to him? <laughs> Why is he only shrink? <laughs> well, I, I, they say as you get older, gravity pulls you down, so it's, it's starting to pull me. When do you really have fun? I I have a good I'll have a good time in a phone booth if, you know just with a glass of wine and all you know I, it doesn't take much to, for for me to have a good time and I have I I feel my best on the stage when I'm playing my happiest what? and my safety I'm safer there I know for some reason it's funny how people you get into show business and you want to be known and as soon as everybody knows you you hide you know. And then all of a sudden, when, when you figured people don't know you again, you try to get out and do, you know, get your name going again. Then you, you, you're sneaking out the back door again. It's, it's the craziest thing, but it's, I guess it's human nature. And, uh, and I can't, I don't think I can, I don't think I can handle being a, a heavyweight. Because I, uh, I could talk to people a lot, but as for a crowd of people pulling at you, then, you know, I'd go hard. If you look back, uh, how old are you? A 53. Got a few years I forgot. <laughs> no, 54. I've been, I've been lying about it. You used to be 63 I've been, and I've been lying about it so long. <laughs> My wife said the other day, you, you're lying, you're going to catch yourself. I'm born 1930, so I'm 54. Kids? Yeah. Any kids? July 3rd. Three and three grandchildren. Any of them involved in music? Uh, no, my daughter was until she got involved with her husband. So that, that took care of the guitar. She, she played good uh, classical guitar. As you look back on a... Uh, it seems like you've been around forever. I, I have. Well, I'm, <laughs> you got I've, been, I've been I've been record. I have 85 albums, 83 albums that I record. I have two more in a can that that I recorded through my lifetime, and uh, and it started when I was 16 to 17 years old recording. So I'm 54 now, so I've been recording a long time. I ask you when you have fun, and I want to also know when you have fun in, at your work. When can you tell that this is a high moment? Do you do it on this stage here, or do you have to go to Reunion Hall here? No, or no, I, at different, different times, different places when you reach the peak. Or Where's when your height? What's when the you height? Get little, when you get little bumps on your, on your, on your body, when, you, when it starts to sing, the clarinet and the people, you know, you know you have them. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's Can a you remember a couple feeling. of big moments? Oh, playing? Yeah. Uh, I did Carnegie Hall once. That, that, was, that was exciting because Benny was my, one of my idols. Benny Goodman and Irving Fazola. Those two, uh, Irving Fazola was a clarinet player with the Bob Crosby Bobcats that recorded March of the Bobcats and a couple of things. And Benny Goodman is the old master. You know, he was he was my idol. Both of them. I like Benny's drive and and Goodman, uh, Benny's drive and, and Fazola's big sound he had. So I tried to put it together and come up with Fountain. So I've been lucky enough to. Did you ever did you ever come up with something that you thought you really were going to win with and it was a big flop? Oh yeah, a lot of times. <laughs> I have about about sixty albums. <laughs> they just didn't make it. Well, they did all right, but they didn't they didn't they didn't make the noise that we we all thought they would. And it's funny once you record these things, you get into the studio, you know, you think it's going to be a winner. You say, "Boy, we have something here," and you go home, you get excited. But you know, when it comes out, it's uh, it, it makes it sold some of these albums. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have recorded that many albums me if they wasn't selling them. So they. Uh, not to keep them in a can, I'm, I'm not sure. Your favorite album? I Love Paris, it's full orchestra. Um, one called Pete Fountain's New Orleans, they're still selling. We sold over three million records of, of this, albums of this. But this is just in the last 20 years now, it's not in the last, it just keeps on, keeps on the market. Not gonna ask you for your personal financial situation, but would, could you retire on your album sales alone? Is there enough money no. to be made in albums? No. Uh, years, I, I, I could have years back, but I had bad investments. <laughs> so I bought a hotel. You know, not here, not this one. But uh, I, I, I had bad, uh, bad investments. Uh, but that, I'm still going. I'm happy. It, it didn't hurt me. I just had to, you have to pick yourself up and start running again. 
we are on the road and we are talking politics. Um, and I assume as a New Orleans resident and a Louisiana citizen and an American citizen, you vote. Do you vote? Oh, yes. yes. Do you feel strongly about politics? Uh, not that strong. I, wouldn't, uh, I was about to get into it. I was about to run for mayor. And then my wife threatened to leave me. <laughs> Why were you going to run for mayor? Because uh, I, I figured I was so well known in New Orleans, I could have won and, and you know gotten into politics and uh, and still play music, which which it was bad advice from friends that really some friends that really <laughs> was was trying to promote me, saying, "Won't you run for me? Nobody's going to run against the, the, the guy." He was so I figured, well, I just throw my hat in there and do it. And then my wife sat me down and said, "Are you crazy?" When was this? This was uh, about. Eight years ago. Eight, Had you run, ago. what would have been your principal reason for running? Uh, cleaning the city up, trying to, to uh, my biggest thing, my love has always been Bourbon Street. So, because I, like I said, born and raised, just to try to clean and get more tourism. And because uh, this, is, this is a big thing with this town. Everybody loves it, they come to you. Do you feel ideological? Do you feel that you have a strong political belief? No, I, I didn't. I, once, once, once I start to think about it, I said, you know, forget about it. So I, I, I backed off on it. But I just made the statement on television, and all of a sudden, the whole press came down on me and said, are oh, you going to run? And then I said, yes. And then the next day I said, no. So, uh, because my wife really, I, I still have the note home. It was a nice little note she wrote. She said, if you run for mayor, we, we you know. It's over. It's over. And, really, and, and the kid, and well, and the kid, but yet she was serious. Let's put it this way. And, and I knew the way she, she figured I couldn't handle it because really, you know, I don't think I could now. And I, to look back at what, what, what everybody's going through because I never did pay no attention to it. I thought it was fun city, you know, they like just run for mayor and just, you know. But to see what these guys going through in politics and uh, you know, the, the governor, the mayor, the president, I, uh, I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be happy. But I thought maybe I could play every night and, and, and run the city in the and, daytime. And run the city. Oh, I had it all figured out. All up here. Very little up there. <laughs> but Can you tell when y your audiences are interested in politics? Is there any f no. special feel? I, uh, I, I try to keep it off the stage. Do you, do you resent when you see performers endorsing candidates? No, I, uh, no. It's, but it's, you don't believe it. You that's, just don't like that's it. That's American. You know, you can do... You know, do people validated. follow stars any more than they do anybody else? Uh, no. It's How about this political year? Do you, do you sense that people care about this particular presidential election? Well, I, I have to say the president, I, I, I was with, with him one uh, time where we, we were playing in San Francisco at the Bohemian Grove. And he was down there with uh, Congress, Congressman Murray. And uh, we were all on a plane together, and we almost got wiped out. We uh, we were taken off, and the plane landed right in front of us. You're so kidding? We all was he brought, president then or governor? We, no, 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 no. He was just just the uh, the actor. The actor Ronald Reagan mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. What do you so, think? And, and, and you like so, it? Somebody hollers. I don't know whether it's him. He always had a hell of a sense of humor. He they said, "Take two. <laughs> and then I'm sitting on the floor, you know, like and I I don't like to fly anyway. So even then, and he said. Uh, I think it was Philip 66 or 76 or something, the, uh, the private plane out of, uh, out of San Francisco. You know, it, was, it was a private aircraft, whatever it was. And they said, somebody, I think it's him, Tyler, take two. And I said, oh, so we sit back on the seat. We all, we were all on top of each other because this plane had to stop that fast. But if he wouldn't, there was a plane came right in front of it. So we, we almost lost the president and the clarinet player. <laughs> Thank you, Pete so, Brown. You're welcome. Thank you, Brian.